I'm here to talk about a, a situation that's occurring in my home state with a, a, a leak, a natural gas leak that is creating havoc in uh, one of my communities. But before I do, I, I want to comment on the issue that my Democratic leader talked about, which is the poisoning of children uh, in, in Flint, Michigan, due to lead in the drinking water. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe I'm old-fashioned, Madam President, but I believe when you hurt a child, that's the lowest thing you can do. There's nothing lower in life than hurting an innocent child. That means if you abuse a child, if you taunt a child, but when you poison a child and their brain is damaged for the rest of their life, that's the lowest thing an adult can do. And any adult who knew, who knew that these children were being poisoned and looked the other way, in my view, is liable. You don't hurt a child. You don't hurt a child, let alone for life, and destroy their mind. And so I know that Senators Stabenow and Peters are working hard with the Republicans to come up with something to help the people there. And I hope that it will work out. I know that my Committee on the Environment, we've been working with them, along with Senator Inhofe, so we can do something. But it's after the fact. And it's not like you can make this damage go away. And Madam President, what shocked me was on the heels of this tragedy and travesty in Flint, Michigan, uh, we were marking up a bill and the Republicans, to a person, supported the ability of people spraying pesticides into drinking water not to have to get a permit anymore. Take away the authority of the EPA to require a permit if you're going to spray harmful pesticides with toxins into a drinking water supply. This is what my Republican friends did in the Environment Committee. I think they ought to change the name of that committee to the Pollution Committee. What is that? In addition, the underlying bill says you can never regulate the lead in fishing tackle under Tosca. Lead. Hello? We now know what lead does when it gets into drinking water. If there are ways to have less toxic fishing tackle, shouldn't we try to make that happen if it's available? So here you have a bill, it's called the Sportsman's Bill. Lots of things in there are wonderful and I support wholeheartedly. But now you're gonna say you can never regulate the lead in fishing tackle? under Tosca. And then you're going to say you don't need a, a permit to spray pesticide into a water supply? You've got to be kidding. You know, we talk a lot about defending the American people. Well, we've got to do it abroad and at home. Because dead is dead, okay? And it's a serious issue when you expose people to toxins, they get cancer, they have brain damage. So I'm hopeful that we can do something for the people of Flint and stand with them. But I'll tell you, it's not gonna let people off the hook. Anybody who knew this was happening and turned away or said, who cares, it's a poor community, well, they'll, they'll, they'll be punished at some point, even if it's their own heart. But we cannot disconnect, Madam President, from that incident to what we're doing today in saying you no longer need a permit to dump pesticides into drinking water. What are people thinking? Are we so beholden to special moneyed interests that we can't tell them they have to have responsibility? So defending our people means having a smart policy to defend them from terror, which I support, 
but also means protecting and defending them with reasonable rules and regulations so that we don't poison them here at home or hurt the brains of their kids. Now, Madam President, I want to show you something that's happening in my state as we speak. This is quite a picture. It shows you what a gas leak looks like, plumes of methane gas above a community. This is an infrared camera. This is what is happening from a natural gas leak. And it didn't happen yesterday, and it didn't happen a month ago. It happened on October 23rd, Madam President, and it is still out of control. And I have introduced a, uh, an amendment on behalf of myself and Senator Feinstein today to get some of the brightest minds from the Department of Energy, and there are very bright minds over there, to take a look at what the heck is happening and why it is that this is, is running amok. It is now burning longer than the BP oil spill spilled. And I remember so well, because I worked so hard on the committee with all of my colleagues, with Senator Landrieu and others, to get to the bottom of why it was happening. And we sent Stephen Chu, who was then Secretary of Energy, and guess what? And the BP spill, he figured out a better way to track the spill and therefore contain it by using gamma rays, as I remember. Now, as of last week, almost 3,700 households have been relocated to hotels and other temporary housing because the residents who live right here are experiencing headaches, nausea, dizziness, nosebleeds, and other side effects stemming from the rotten egg smell, the chemicals that give the natural gas its artificial odor. This is Aliso Canyon. Schools have temporarily closed because the kids and teachers can't stand the smell all day. People's homes, their furniture, everything they've left behind are becoming infused with this hard smell and the chemicals. It's a disaster for these residents and for many local businesses that are struggling to stay afloat. Now you see here, this is, Madam President, the Aliso Canyon leaking well site, but the plume all over this community. I want to share a couple of photos with you because we know a picture is worth a thousand words. These are children sick of being sick at school. This is a mom who is having serious headaches. That's why this amendment is so important, because this is what's happening. And by the way, it could happen probably anywhere where there are these natural gas storage sites. There are 400 in America. 400 in America, Madam President. So if this is the first, we better deal with it and figure out how to deal with it, because right now it's running amok. We'll go back to that photo. So one of my constituents says, my husband and I moved there over three years ago. We poured a lot of money into this home, our dream home, thinking it was a perfect area to move. I'm expecting we had difficulties trying to conceive. The joy has been robbed from us because we've had to relocate twice. I'm fearful to bring my newborn baby back to Porter Ranch. That's the community here, Porter, Porter Ranch. She says, I'm fearful to bring my newborn baby back to Porter Ranch when the time comes and they say the coast is clear. Another Porter uh, Ranch, and I'll, I'll say uh, this particular individual, Scott McClure, was quoted in the LA Times, quote, I can't go outside and play baseball with my sons. I can't go on walks with my family. My youngest son has been moved to another school. My property value has dropped. I get headaches and stomach aches. The California Air Resources Board 
estimates that more than 86.5 million kilograms of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, have been emitted into the atmosphere. So we move from a disaster for our families, reflected in this woman's face, to a disaster for the environment because it is, so far, 2.2 million tons of carbon dioxide, that's the equivalent uh, of the methane that has poured into the atmosphere. That is more greenhouse gas than 40, 468,000 cars emit in one year. Just think, in over three months, this one leak has emitted as much as half a million cars do in an entire year. And we've worked so hard across party lines here to make sure that our cars have good fuel economy and don't emit so much of this greenhouse gas. And now we've seen as much as half a million cars in an entire year. That's what's come into the atmosphere. Now this leaking well is 8,600 feet deep. The leak is thought to be around 500 feet below the surface. The gas company has unsuccessfully attempted to kill the well seven times by, putting, by plugging it with brine and gavel. They're now attempting to drill a relief well down to the reservoir and cut off the existing well at its base. But this may not be completed for another month. And if it isn't successful, they'll have to start over again. So October 23rd, we are now starting February. And these people have lived with this extraordinary disaster over them. Now, I pray that this nightmare will be over and people can move back to their homes and that they have the peace of mind that their homes are clean and their air is clean and the community will return to normal. In the meantime, we have to figure out what caused this leak, how to prevent it from happening again at Aliso Canyon and everywhere around the country where there are 400 similar sites. On January 6, 2016, the governor of the state of California declared an emergency for Los Angeles County due to the Aliso Canyon natural gas leak. State regulators have been working with gas company, with the gas company and with federal FIMSA and EPA. And FIMSA is hazardous pipeline. They check to make sure that those hazardous pipelines, the pipelines that carry this hazardous material are safe. Now they've been working and they've been providing consultation. I want to say that the uh, working group, our, um, our working group on climate change called in the federal people who are working in FIMSA and the uh, EPA. And they're doing these conference calls and they're working, but you know what? It's not enough. It's not enough. We need the best minds, the best minds. And that's why Senator Feinstein and I have offered this amendment today. It's at the desk. And under the amendment, the Department of Energy Secretary would lead a broad review of this leak, including the cause, the response, the impacts on communities and the environment. They will issue a finding to all of us, all of our committees, we list them, and to the president within six months. But if they find something in the course of their investigation that can solve this leak or prevent another leak in your state, Madam President, or anybody's state, they would have to come forward and make it clear, report that finding. The task force includes representatives of, again, FIMSA, the Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration, Department of Health and Human Services, Environmental Protection Agency, the Federal Energy Regulatory Committee, and the Department of Commerce. We have a small task force here. Is it now seven? Seven. And the reason is we don't want some big bureaucracy. We want a small task force to, to meet, headed by Secretary Moniz, who is an outstanding scientist. 
And we want them to help solve this crisis and provide relief for the thousands of affected residents when they come in with their analysis. And we want to make sure, we want to make sure this doesn't happen again in anybody's state. Because I can tell you, when you have a constituent like this in your state that comes out and says, my God, I don't know what to do. That's, that's what's on this face. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. My kids are breathing this. I'm breathing this. Where do I go? So we need our brightest minds uh, absolutely dealing with this. And that's what our amendment does. Um, again, we have more than 400 underground natural gas storage facilities. We have nine in California. This is a public health and public safety issue that's critical for people, not only in my state, but across the nation. Again, we know our most sacred responsibility is to keep our people safe. And whenever we say that, people right away think about what's happening abroad and absolutely homeland security and taking on ISIL and doing everything we have to do to keep our people safe. We have the Super Bowl coming up in, in my beautiful state. And believe me, we're focused on that. This is a great nation. We know how to take care of our people. So therefore, when you see a woman like this, or children saying they're sick, and you see this, and this is what the people of California are seeing in their living rooms, the picture of this out-of-control plume going on since October 23rd, you think, wait a minute, this is the greatest country in the world, the greatest minds in the world, the greatest science in the world. We do so many wonderful things, and we can't stop this leak, my God. It's ridiculous. And I was frustrated after I had that meeting, Madam President, because you and I are very much like in in many ways, we want to solve a problem, you know? And we don't want bureaucracy to get in the way. We want to get the best people, who cares who gets the credit, sit around, get it done. And when I had this meeting with those federal officials who were uh, on these conference calls, I got a clear, clear sense. After all my years of experience, and I've had a lot, I started out, I didn't have all this gray hair. So the bottom line is I know <laughs> from experience that it doesn't feel like somebody's really in charge. And that's why Senator Feinstein and I are giving this amendment all of our heart and soul. And we hope that our friends on the other side will sign off on it, because I know the Democratic side has. I believe they will. We're working with them right now on a couple of issues. And if this passes and becomes the law of the land, uh, we will finally have someone in charge here at the federal level, someone so bright, so smart, Secretary Moniz. I have a lot of faith in him. I think a lot of us do. He's, he's, not, uh, he's in it for the right reasons. And I think if he comes in there and they start to take a look at this, they may well find something right away that has been overlooked that could stop this horrific leak. I only just want to close with this. Californians, are, uh, we're a leader in so many areas, in technology and in entertainment and in trade. And we would be the seventh or eighth largest economy uh, in the world. I don't want to be a leader showing the way to the future with this kind of a, a travesty. I want to solve the problem. I want to tell my friends here in the Senate, we have the technology to solve it. We have leak detection systems to, to find these problems before they happen. You know, this, this particular uh, yard started in the 50s, in the, in the 50s. Well, my God, if you build a house in the 50s, you gotta, you got to keep on making improvements. You know, and I don't know the history of all this, and I'm not getting into that now. We are where we are. But I would suggest if this natural gas yard was set up in the 50s, I don't think there were a lot of homes around it at that time. Let's be clear. But we have to think about these things, where we place uh, these facilities. 
And, and if I were in another state right now, and I'm going to do this in California, I'm going to take a look at all the other, is it eight other facilities in my state that, God forbid, if they have a leak, what's, what's going to happen? And how can you prevent it if the, you know, maybe the, it's an easy way to, to, uh, to maintain these pipes in a way that makes sense. If we can find that out, we can stop this. We can say this was horrible. We stopped it and we're gonna be able to prevent other explosions like this from happening. And if they do happen, we're gonna know how to deal with it. We're not gonna subject kids to this where they have to go out with signs. By the way, masks around, around their neck here, signs that say, relocate our school. Sick of being sick at school. And dislocate these kids, which they have been dislocated. They've been dislocated from their school. You know what it is as a kid. You have your world. Your world is your home. Your world is your school. Your world is your family. That's it. You disrupt that. It's very difficult on our children. So I hope and pray that we'll get this done today and we'll get the Energy Department uh, ready to go on this. And I think even if we pass it here and we don't get it quickly to the House and they don't do it quickly, I think we'll send a signal to the Department of Energy that they can look at this now and, and help in a way where they would have the confidence that we'd all be behind that here in the Senate. I'm looking forward to a vote on this. I hope we have a voice vote. We don't need a recorded vote on something like this. I'm going to go continue to work with the uh, Republican leaders on this. And I hope we can move forward. And I thank you so much, Madam President, for your uh, patience and your time. Thank you.